Now going into the NVIDIA app itself, on your home screen, you'll have your library of your recently opened apps. You can press see all if you want to. Uh, these are all the most recent apps I've opened. So let's say for example, Fortnite, I wanna optimize it for the highest performance. Let's slide it all the way to the left like how I just did. And it'll show all of your settings and if you press update, it'll change all of them. For me, I want to leave it where it's at. And same exact thing for quality. It'll update it, optimize it to its best fitting, and so on and so forth. Now, if you scroll down, you're gonna see RTX Dynamic Vibrance. You can turn that on if you want to. You can turn it off. This is global. This will affect all of your apps that support it. Uh, if you know anything about any of these, you could mess with them. If you don't, leave it alone. Uh, your max frame rate, if you have screen tear or something like that, you could turn this on. Turn this to your uh, monitor's hertz. So for example, mine is 144, so 144 FPS. Press apply. For me, I don't have any issues with my monitor, so I'm just gonna press cancel. So in the driver section, it's just gonna show you like what new updates are happening. It'll scroll through it by itself. Game ready driver is basically uh, drivers for your games and studio driver is better experience for your editing apps like DaVinci, Adobe Premiere, stuff like that. So choose whatever you use more. Uh, if you are kind of like me and you play a lot and then you edit later, uh, just honestly use Game Ready Driver. It works perfectly fine. I have not had any issues with it whatsoever on multiple different drivers. If you ever need to reinstall a driver, just press reinstall and follow the prompts easily through there. Now, whenever your update goes through for your NVIDIA app, it's just gonna show you exactly what changed, what updates there are. If you wanna read this, feel free to read it. So if we go ahead and press on system, we'll see displays. If you have G-Sync, uh, mine is currently not enabled, so that's why it says it's not available. Uh, it'll show your monitor and your resolution that you're at and your refresh rate that you're at. If you are on a portrait monitor, you can press portrait, it'll change it to its needed orientation. Same thing with uh, landscape flipped and portrait flipped. Going on to the video portion, you have super resolution and HDR. If your monitor supports it, you can click on it and these are the settings that it will show up with. Going on to the performance tab. So automatic tuning is your overclock. Uh, so automatic tuner, which finds the best overclock settings for your GPU and maintains that performance on a regular basis. So it'll keep all of your overclocked settings throughout the day, throughout the night, whatever. Uh, if you decide to turn this on, click this, turn off Discord, YouTube, anything that produces video, do not unplug anything. Just click this. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes to diagnose your GPU for its best settings. If you are more advanced, you could turn on the voltage maximum percentage. This goes to 100. Same exact thing with your power. I would just leave that default. And then your temperature target, you wanna leave this at 83 if it's at 83. You do not wanna exceed past 85. That's whenever you wanna start worrying about your graphics card. So I would personally leave that be. And your fan speed target percentage, leave that at automatic. Unless if you wanna change it yourself. And then my rig basically just shows you uh, what driver you're at, what operating system you have, your CPU, RAM, storage, so on and so forth. And last but not least, going down to the settings tab. So your features, you could turn on NVIDIA overlay, which is just this. If you want to turn that off and save uh, GPU utilization, if that matters to you a lot, you could turn that off. And that means your instant replace will not work. Your recordings will not work through NVIDIA. If you just want NVIDIA app for drivers, then you could just turn this off and save GPU utilization. I would recommend turning automatic driver downloads on. So this will download the drivers for you. And then once that driver is ready to install, this will show uh, a green install button or express install. And then you follow the prompts through that. It's very simple. And games and apps, if you have any issues, uh, you can press scan now and it should be able to fix it. If you want to automatically optimize new added games or apps, you could turn this on. The video will optimize it to its best 
So as you can see, whenever I press Alt and R at the top right, right here, it'll count my FPS, my GPU utilization, my CPU utilization, and my latency for my monitor. Now, if you wanna change this around, you have to press Alt and Z, go down to statistics, there's basic, there's advanced, there's custom. So if you do like benchmarking and whatnot, you could have a ton of options. Uh, feel free to go through that on your own time. If you just want FPS, it'll show your FPS at the top right or wherever you place it. Or if you're just like me, you just want the basics. There you go, you can have the basics. Uh, if it's hard to read, you can go to configure heads up display and then go down to font size and then you click on the right or left arrow, change it to large and it'll be larger so you could read it better. So here are the colors right here. I'm just gonna go through them one by one. Some of them are hard to see. Some may not be for you guys. And then you have custom color. You could put in whatever you want. And I believe this is NVIDIA's color. And then you have your default, which would be white. Then you have your status indicators at the bottom right. It'll show you exactly what each icon looks like. So you'll see this one whenever you're recording through NVIDIA. You could put this on upper right, bottom right, bottom left, top left, or you could turn it off like I do. If you have instant replay enabled, this will show up wherever you place it. This is what it looks like right here. And then highlights, microphone, and stats logging. Moving on to the layout part. So this will affect your uh, stats at the top right or wherever it's at. So we'll do double, that just breaks it down to double. Stack turns it more into a vertical display. Linear is just left to right. And then vertical position, you can just move it down or up, left or right. If you want to turn them off, you could just press Alt and R and it'll turn itself off. Moving to the record section. So you could do Alt and F9 to start recording, or you could click this and it'll record for you. Uh, since I'm already recording on OBS, I'm gonna stop recording on here. Now for instant replay, this is one of my favorite things. Uh, you do Alt and F10 to clip a instant replay. Now, if you want to optimize this, you would click on it like I just did, configure video capture, turn this off first, turn that off. And then your instant replay length, it could go up to 20 minutes. I have it on 15 seconds just because I want funny clips or good clips, whatever it may be. Now your quality varies between low, medium, and high, 30 FPS, 60 FPS, and 120 FPS. Now, if you are going to be clipping on 120 FPS or recording on 120 FPS, you want 100 megabytes per second bit rate or higher, which the highest it goes to is 130. Now your resolution, it could be 4K, it could be 1440, 1080, 720, 480, so on and so forth. I just put mine to end game for the most accurate resolution. So moving on out of here, re-enable all of these. Photo mode, I'm not really sure what this does. I could test it real quick. So we'll do uh, black and white and then snap. Oh, okay, so it just takes a screenshot of your in-game. Now up here, you're gonna see your gallery. Everything that you recently recorded, uh, for example, under Rainbow Six Siege will be in here. Now your actual uh, full gallery will be, your full gallery will be placed in a different folder. So let's click on one of these and click on open location. Now it'll come up through the videos right here. So go to this PC, go down to videos, and then you'll see different ones. These are OBS, so ignore that. NVIDIA. And then for me, I have Call of Duty Black Ops 6. I have Desktop and I have Rainbow Six Siege. So all of them are organized. It automatically creates the folder and automatically organizes it for you. Now moving down to the highlight section. If you want to turn on and capture highlights, it'll uh, clip a highlight of that game. So Fortnite, for example, three or four eliminations, it'll clip that. It'll clip three eliminations or a win. That's what I have enabled. If you guys want different, feel free to enable those. It's not just Fortnite, there's multiple different games. Just check it out on your own time. Now, if you do not want these on, you can just simply turn it off. But for me, I want them on. Now, moving on over to the settings. We have shortcut controls. You could change all of these. So you could pause at any given point. 
These are all of the shortcut controls that NVIDIA app provides at this time. Going to the heads up display, this is just the Alt R part. So we're going to skip that. Notifications is whenever it shows a notification like this, a screenshot saved, it'll slide in and then slide back out whenever it's done. If you do not want these, you can turn that off. I do, so I'm going to leave it on. Your audio. The audio one is going to be for your mic and your system sound. So say that you want your mic to be louder than your system sounds, like your game audio, for example. You can turn this up and you can turn that down or however you want. Now, if you want to change your microphone, you want to turn this off, go to your settings, go to audio. If you have any issues with your uh, microphone being a different one, I could really easily show you how to fix that real quick. Okay, so if you're having any issues with your microphone and you can't select the right one, you want to go down to your sound settings. So go down to your sounds, right click, press sounds, go to recording, find your microphone, make sure it's enabled by right clicking on it. If it says disable, it's enabled. If it has a green check mark, that is your default and you're good to go. Now, if you have different ones like Realtek, Logitech, G435, you want to disable those in the recording section of the sounds. Uh, for example, I'll show you a little issue I may have had in the past. So go to your settings, go to audio. So see how it lights up right here? This is going to pick up my microphone on my headset. And sometimes it would force me to use this one because my fee fine was disabled. So if you have that same issue, it's very easy to fix. Now, if you don't want this to be on your list, you can go back into your sound settings. You can go back into your sound settings, and right click this, disable, and press OK, and you'll be good to go. Files and disk space. So if you are recording on a very low amount storage drive, you can turn this on, and you can give it, pay attention to the right number, you can give it a certain amount of space, so like 89 gigabytes, uh, 45 and a half gigabytes, or the lowest is 22.2 22 .2 gigabytes of recording. So here we are in Rainbow Six Siege. This is the game filter portion of the video. I will say if you want to check over all of the game filters, please do it on your own time. I'm only going to go over a couple. If you are on a game that currently supports game filter, uh, most of you play Fortnite, for example, that does not support it. Rainbow Six Siege does. Uh, that's one of my games that does support it. So we'll do RTX Dynamic Vibrance. We'll click that. As you can see, it changed up my screen. This also has a different intensity value that you could change. So let's change that up, let's change it down, put it back to where it was. And it also has saturation boost, which gets rid of saturation or adds more. So that's RTX. So we'll do Vignette, or however you pronounce it. You could click on it, click on the down arrow, intensity. So you'll see like the shadows cut in on the corners. We'll put night mode on. So this is kind of like more yellow colors to my knowledge. So let's click on night mode, intensity. Oh yeah, that is, I think it just gets rid of like a lot of blue color or blue light, whatever you want to call it. Uh, okay, so once you're done with these and you don't want to use them anymore, you can just click on all of them and press the trash can right here. It'll turn all of them off once you press remove and you're back to normal. Uh, but for those of you that want to look over the list of what it has, these are all different ones. So that is basically everything that I will cover in this video. I hope you guys found this informative to some extent. Uh, if I missed anything, please leave it down in the comment section. I also have a Discord server, so that's in the description of every video that I have. Feel free to join it at any given time. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.